Hey everybody, James from Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. If you haven't subscribed to us and you enjoy the video, we'd really like it that you would. Um, this is a video about uh, inbreeding and what the problems are, the dangers are of inbreeding. So what are we talking about? Well, let's just talk about humans and what we know about humans on inbreeding. So inbreeding is where you um, have a child with uh, your cousin or with your mother or worse yet with your sister uh, and it has can have bad consequences um, and we've got some proof of that if you look at things like the uh, the house of the royal Habsburgs uh, they had a huge amount of inbreeding going on uh, and, and the reason for that by the way in those situations was it was to great maintain power so you didn't want other people marrying outside the family because you were going to let these other people in, commoners or whatever, become part of the ruling empire. And, and because they wanted to keep control of all of that, they, they stopped that. And the way they stopped that was, was to basically, uh, cousins were marrying cousins and uncles were marrying nieces. And uh, they had a huge, huge problem with this, which kind of culminated, if I remember my history right, with... Uh, I think Charles the second of Spain in the 1600s they had this problems coming up with a lot of uh, protruding jaws he had a protruding jaw that was so bad that he drooled and he couldn't speak properly until he was like four years old and couldn't walk till he was I think he couldn't he couldn't walk until he was four and couldn't speak till he was eight or something like that but anyway he went crazy I mean he was nuts I mean he was basically at the end of he, he was impotent and it was the end of the whole Habsburg line. It got so bad. Uh, we've got the same kind of things going on in the, uh, uh, some of the other European uh, kings and queens with uh, uh, haemophilia. Um, uh, William of Orange and that line had haemophilia. So they had um, uh, offspring that didn't make it. I think with the Habsburgs, I think more than half of the Habsburgs didn't make it past seven years old. So it was really, really a bad deal. So why is it a bad deal? And why would you want to do it? So in the dog world, people do line breeding. They even do inbreeding, but they specifically do line breeding because they're trying to reinforce a particular trait that they like, that they think will win them in the show ring. Um, and of course, if you look at the, the dogs that I know about, Frenchies, I mean, they all basically came from a not too big gene pool in the beginning so it's not like now you take a mutt dog that comes from the pound and it's got a huge genetic diversity you get a french bulldog and its genetic diversity is considerably smaller and it does present problems so why what is going on why would it present a problem so i've done some other videos on this but i'm going to go into this into a little bit of detail and, and i apologize if it's a bit rambly because i never think about this stuff beforehand i just kind of put it out on the board so for what it's worth i hope it's understandable so every living organism has DNA DNA is like an instruction manual that says how hey, you build a James or one of you and my DNA is unique and of course that's why we use this in forensics to catch people at crimes because somebody's DNA is absolutely unique to them and nobody else has my DNA and nobody else has your DNA unless you have um, a, uh, a clone of you. If you have a clone of you, then they have exactly the same DNA. And if you put two clones and, and, and mate them together, you m would have all kinds of problems. Why? Well, let's talk about the structure first. So in humans, we have what we call chromosomes. And the chromosomes are pairs of strings of DNA, genetic material. And you get one from your mum and one from your dad. And these 23 pairs of DNA that you get, one from your mum, one from your dad, have um, proteins, and there's actually four different kinds of proteins that join together. And depending on where they are on this string, it determines what kind of, whether you have dimples, whether you have a big jaw, whether you have big ears, whether you have blue eyes, these are all things that come down from the DNA that you get from both your parents. So what happens when um, two parents both have their own chromosomes and DNA, what happens is they take one pair from one and one pair from the other, and they then go together to make up 
um, I'm not drawing that very well. These two go together and they then make up a combination of their DNA that then makes up their offspring. Okay, so straightforward enough. Well, not straightforward enough, but extremely complicated, but that's, that's how life goes on. So you've got an instruction manual, an instruction manual, or it's not really a recipe, it's not really the right word for it, but anyway, there's a code that basically defines what you are, and every single egg and every single sperm in males and females have a different set of this stuff because it's, it's not every sperm you've got looks exactly the same with the same DNA, it's not. It's a randomized mixture of what your parents gave you. Okay, so now we need to talk about recessive genes and dominant genes. And we're gonna talk about a single thing. We're gonna talk about, to start with, we're just gonna talk about eye color. And <clears throat> your, we're, gonna, we're gonna call this, in French, it would be the blue gene, it's not eye color, it's the fur, but we'll call it, it's called the dilution gene. And you've got, this is either big D, big D, which is a non-blue dog, or it's little d, little d, which is a blue dog. And what other variations do you have? Well, the other variation would be big D, little d. Those are the pairs that you can get up. It doesn't matter, way, by the way, which way around this is. It's not like a sentence where there's a spelling in this. It could, be, it could be drawn that way, it'd be the same thing. By convention, you put the dominant gene first and the recessive second. All right, so this is a not blue, and this is a blue, and this is a blue carrier. And since this is a recessive gene, which most genes are, you have to have two copies for the blue to show up. So in you, if you have blue eyes, it means that your parents either have blue eyes or they have the gene for blue eyes. Neither of your parents could be that. Otherwise, they're not your parents. <laughs> I hope you don't find out that's the case. But to get blue eyes, you have to have little d, little d, and you have to have had a parent that is either little d, little d, we'll do a Punnett square here, or you have to have a, a parent that is big D, little d, has a copy of it. So what do you get? You get an offspring where half of the puppies or half of the humans or whatever have blue eyes and half of them are blue carriers. Okay. And if, if one of your parents has blue eyes, then you have to be a carrier of blue. You cannot, you could have brown eyes, but you have to have a carrier of blue, which means that offspring from you could very likely have blue eyes, despite the fact that you have brown eyes. Okay, so that's just a very quick run, rundown in how DNA works. So now I want to talk the specifics about why things can go wrong and how they can go wrong. Okay, so this is the mother, and this is the father. And <clears throat> the mother has, uh, she has, in, in, in some of her DNA, she has a really terrible gene. We're going to mark it in blue. And then the other side of the gene that she has of that pair is okay. It's not a double, she doesn't have both copies of it. And because she doesn't have both copies of it, it does not express itself in the, in, the, in the children. The children will not suffer from this horrible, horrible gene. I mean, there's things like Hunter's disease in humans, where if you get two copies of Hunter's disease, you die by the time you're 35 years old. There are some extremely nasty genes out there. And by the way, I hate to break it to you, but you have some of those in your genetic profile, and so do I, and so does everybody. But for the most part, we're lucky enough that we have kids with somebody who does not have that gene, that bad gene. They have the good copy of it. They do not have, they've got two copies of the good, not one copy of the good one. So what happens? So these two, mother and father, produce some offspring. And those offspring, one half of the offspring are gonna get the bad gene from mum, and one half the offspring are gonna get the good gene from mum, and they're all gonna get the good gene from dad. So what do you end up getting? In a, in a family that comes from that, P, 
pairing, you'd expect to get half of them that don't have the ailment whatsoever. And half of them have this horrible, terrible, disastrous gene, wrong, wrong color, disastrous gene, which ends up with them having some kind of terrible thing like Huntington's disease, and they suffer from it, and they're all hell breaks loose. But they don't have two copies, and because of that, they don't suffer from it. So we're good, we're fine, it's not a problem. Now we start doing some line breeding, and let's make this the male, and we'll make this the female. Okay, we're gonna do some line breeding because this male here is just spectacular. I mean, you know, he's an Adonis. I mean, he is Fabio in reincarnation. So we decide that we're going to let him breed with his mother. Okay, so then we have, we're gonna bring his mother down here so we can see what happens. Here's the mum. And they've both got a copy of the good portion and a copy of the bad portion. So that offspring from them, I'm drawing the wrong color again, sorry. The offspring from them We're gonna, half the time they get that, half the time they get that. So if you do a Punnett square on this, and remember that here's the genes we've got. We've got that gene and we've got this gene. And over here we've got that gene, we've got this gene. And if we pair them up together, what do we get? We get double blues. That is the, like the dad, that's, nothing to do with it. Those offspring will never pass it on to their children. No problem at all. Then we'll get some that get, I've got the wrong color again, I apologize. We'll get some that are carriers. They carry a copy of it. They, they, they skirted on the, the border of danger, but they didn't get it. They're not gonna suffer from it. And without doing a DNA test, you wouldn't know that they've got it. And here's the problem. There it is right there. One quarter of the offspring, unfortunately, get a copy of it from the mother and a copy of it from the mother's son. And those ones there, one quarter, have something terrible that's gonna happen. Now, how bad is terrible? It might be that they've got an extra eye, or they're missing an eye, or they're deaf, or they're blind, or they don't make it past three months old, or they don't, they're born dead. I don't know what terrible is, but terrible can be terrible. And how do you test for this? Well, in most cases you can't. There's no genetic test in dogs for the majority of these kind of things that can go wrong. And it's the same thing in human beings, by the way. There aren't very many genetic tests that you can do. We're getting better and better at this with people like 23andMe, where you can do some testing for some of these bad things that can happen, like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. You can test for some of these things now. But the point here is, is that when you start mucking around and you don't go outside your kennel and you start breeding with other people with pedigrees that, uh, you know, you start breeding back in the pedigree line where you breed sisters to uncles and mothers to sons and fathers to daughters, you will get the risk that these bad things are gonna show up in some of the puppies and it can be a really bad deal. So, so what's the advice here is, what is it? Don't do it, it's as simple as that, don't do it. I mean, you know, the, and I don't, want to, I don't want to point fingers at the show ring because those people are gonna be upset with me. But the fact of the matter is they complain about things like breeding blue Frenchies and chocolate Frenchies, but they're doing much worse things than that. They are taking mothers and breeding them to sons and vice versa, and there's so much bigger risk of doing those kind of things. So the whole point here is, I think that it's a huge mistake to be breeding very, if, you, if you've got a pedigree, and you know, a pedigree has got, you know, you've got the, uh, the child, and then you've got the parents, then you've got the grandparents, and then you've got the great-grandparents. So we're just gonna go back, you know, four generations. So this here <clears throat> came from this lineup. And then that then came from two grandparents. And that came from two great grandparents. Didn't do a very good job drawing this. So the, each one of these circles represents basically a dog. A dog. I haven't drawn this very well on the board. 
And then each of these comes from the grandparents. So now this goes up, get the right color pen here, which is that one right there. So now this goes up here, this goes up here. And uh, what color pen is that one? It's probably the right one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you can see that we've got, once we start going back very many generations, we've really got quite a bit of genetic diversity. When we start marrying these ones together, we've got very little genetic diversity. I'm not saying that you should breed grandparents to, to offspring. I, I wouldn't. Once you start getting up a few levels beyond that, you're completely okay. You've got so much diversity. It's called the, uh, um, the breeding coefficient. If you breed a brother to a sister, it's a coefficient of one. If you breed a brother to a mother, it's a coefficient of a half. If you breed to a grandparent, it's a coefficient of a quarter. And once you start getting very many things up there, you've got coefficients that are less than 0.1, and it's not really an issue. But it is an issue. In these first few generations, you don't want to do it, in my opinion. I wouldn't do it. Now, there's people who are absolutely going to do it because they're looking for that. They're prepared to sacrifice the terrible to get some dogs that are spectacular. And uh, we don't do it in human beings for a darn good reason, right? We just don't do that. You don't marry your cousin. You don't marry your cousin and you don't marry your cousin because if you do, number one, it might be illegal depending on where you live. But number two is, is you may have some really badly uh, um, deformed and uh, severely um, impacted kids from doing it. That's it. There it is. Um, hope you got something out of it. Uh, it was a bit rambled, but hopefully you got the concept. WW, my British supply, lots of good products. I love my pups, lots of stud dogs. We're here to help. If you've got questions, give them to us. We'll try to answer them all, or maybe even make a video on it. Bye, everybody. Thank you.